Learning how to create a photorealistic environment can be challenging, especially if you started out like I did. But today I'm going to share what I've learned throughout my Blender journey with you so you can create this. But I don't want this just to be a step-by-step -step tutorial to create this specific landscape. I want to leave you with the skills needed to create any landscape, so without further ado, let's get started. To start, make a plane and scale it so it's big but not too big. Next, subdivide it 100 times by clicking down on the bottom where it says subdivide and changing number of cuts to 100. Now add a displacement modifier which adjusts the topology based on an image. I've linked a polyhaven material in the description and once you've downloaded it, find a file with underscore disp at the end. This is the displacement map and it tells the displacement modifier to raise your vertices where it's white and lower them where it's dark. In your displacement modifier, hit new to add a texture and your plane should move down. This is because by default you get a black texture which moves every vertice down. Next, click the little slider icon thing and it should take you to an area that has an open button. This allows you to import a texture. Open the underscore disp texture and it should work. But it works a little too well and to fix that, go back to the modifier and turn down the strength. While I'm dragging, I can hold the shift key as it allows smaller adjustments. Adjust it to about 0.03 and now it should look like a ground. If you want, right click your object and hit shade smooth to get rid of all those faces. Next, we'll create a material for the ground. Head to the shading tab at the top and hit new. Next, if you don't have it already, go to edit at the very top of your screen and find preferences. Here, go to the add on section and search for node wrangler. Hit the checkbox and you're done. Now, back in the shading tab, just select the principal BSDF, hit the N key and go down to node wrangler. Here, click add principled setup and find the rest of your textures and be sure here not to select the displacement one. If you want to know how Blender applies this kind of texture, watch my video on photorealism. Now, our plane does have a dirt material, but it's huge. To fix this, go to the mapping node, which is used for changing texture sizes, and change the scale to something like 10 in the X, Y, and Z by clicking on the top one and dragging over the rest. Based on how big you made your plane, this may vary for you. There is some tiling, but the plants we add will cover it up. Speaking of plants, let's add some. I download mine from Quixel Megascans, which you can get assets from with an Epic Games account or by paying for credits. As always, Polyhaven is a good alternative, although its selection of plants is limited. One of the key parts of any landscape is how varied its plant life is. So download several different plants, but keep them similar in color and size. I chose to download these. Next, to put them on your plane, go over here to the Particles tab for your object. A particle system emits particles from your object. Particles can be anything from hair on a head to water droplets on a can. Here we'll use them to emit plants from the surface of our ground. To do this, we need to change some settings. First, hit the plus icon to add a particle system. Double click the name and change it to something like yellow flowers, which is the name of the asset I downloaded. Then click hair to change it from emitter. Hair particles are what we want since emitter particles move and fly off the object. Now go to the render dropdown, change path to collection, and after importing your plants, give them names so it doesn't get confusing. Next, move them to new collections by selecting them, hitting M, and creating a collection. Separate the collection by plant types. Now where it says instance collection, find one of your collections. I chose my flowers. And after doing this, you should see plants. But they're really small, so adjust the scale values to something you like. You can also change scale randomness to add some variation. One more thing I do here is select my plane and go into weight paint mode. This allows me to create vertex groups, which are collections of vertices that can be used in a variety of ways. Once you've painted red where you want your plants to go, head back to the particles tab and find vertex groups, and under density, select group. There's two more things to do for our plants. First, give them varied rotation for a natural look. In particles, click advanced and check rotation. Change the phase and randomize phase values to your liking and your plant should look more natural. The final thing we need to do is give them materials. If your object's imported with materials, don't worry about this part. But in the shading tab, select your original plant, and for a second time, add a principled setup to it. If it didn't come with textures, I would recommend deleting it and finding a new one, or looking for textures from where you downloaded it. Now that you have a material for your plant, crank up the transmission for that nice look of the sun shining through leaves. And now you're done with your first plants. Luckily, the process for the rest is much easier. Just create a new particle system on your plane, and to the left of particle, click that little icon and select particle settings. Now both your particle systems have the same settings, so hit 2 to duplicate it to change them. Here, all you have to do is change the instance collection to another one of your plants. If you want to create another vertex group for these plants, I recommend doing this because plants aren't usually evenly placed across an area. Head down to this tab and hit the plus icon. I'll also rename my group so I know which plants they're for. Now, repeat the process from before and find your new group under density for your second particle system. Add a material to the original plant for this system and it's finished. 
I recommend adding at least one more particle system to replicate the natural variation of plant life in most environments. When you add them, be sure to name everything from materials to particle systems. After doing that, I'll go over what I did. On top of the flowers and second layer of plants, I added another layer of grass to act as filler where there weren't any other plants. With your landscape itself done, it's time to configure your render settings. As always, change EV to Cycles, Device to GPU Compute, and under Color Management, Filmic to Filmic Log. Next, let's add an HDRI. I found this great one on Polyhaven, and the link for that is in the description. To add it in Blender, go to your World Properties tab, click on the yellow dot next to Color, and find Environment Texture, and open up your HDRI. Here, change the strength to 1000. Next, go back to your render settings and under color management, adjust the exposure and gamma values to what you like. Now let's set up the camera. For my render, I changed the resolution to be square by going to this tab and matching the resolution X and Y. To position the camera, go into camera view, hit N, and check camera to view under view. Position the camera to your liking, and for the final adjustment, we need to add depth of field. When I did this, I added an empty object and positioned it on one of my flowers by going to different side views. When you're done, go to your camera settings, have the camera selected, and check depth of field. Find your empty and you're done. Rendering may take a while based on what computer you're using, but once it's done, it should hopefully look a little something like this. If you finished this tutorial, don't forget to subscribe and comment if you have any questions. I'll see you next time.